Good day, happy Easter po mga minamahal na uh, kapatid. One of the traditional highlights of uh, Easter celebration is the inkwentro or the salubong. We may be asking what inspired the tradition of the salubong or the inkwentro. Because a quick survey of the scriptures would make us realize that such encounter was not recorded in the Bible. So given that fact, we asked, did the meeting take place in the first place? One of the traditional highlights of our Easter celebration is the Encuentro or the Salubong. This is the dramatic and elaborate reenactment of the meeting of the risen Christ and His mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary. Now we may be asking, what inspired this tradition? Because if we survey the scriptures, we realize that uh, the encounter between Jesus and Mary after the resurrection was not recorded at all. So we may be asking, did Jesus meet with Mother Mary after the resurrection? So join me in this short presentation on the topic, Jesus, the resurrected Jesus meets Mother Mary a theological insight. We will be uh, dividing our presentation into three parts. First, we will explore on the proof of the meeting between Jesus and uh, His mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary. Totoo kaya na nagkita si Jesus at si Maria after the resurrection? That will be the first part. The second part will be the timing of the meeting. If Jesus met his mother Mary, when did it take place? Was it before he showed himself to other disciples? Some, somewhere at the middle? Or after he met or showed himself to the rest of his disciples? And the third part will be the significance of this meeting. What has it to do with our life as Christians? At the outset, uh, we thank uh, the following uh, sources as our uh, references for this exploration. First, we thank Joseph Pronishen of the National Catholic Register. We also consulted the Defending the Bride website. We also thank Father Rafael de la Cruz, SDB. He wrote a scholarly article about the Salubong in uh, Theodula and Proper Religiosity, a religious blog, which is available online. And we also thank uh, Don Stewart of the Blue Letter Bible, which is an online Bible study tool. So let us begin our exploration. The proof of the meeting. Did the recent Jesus really meet his mother? Totoo ba na nagkita si Jesus na muling nabuhay at ang kanyang minamahal na ina. Ang una nating tanong dito, was there really a meeting to begin with? Kung ating titingnan sa Biblia, wala namang nasusulat na nagtagpo si Maria at ang kanyang anak na muling nabuhay. No direct mention in the Bible. But Don Stewart of uh, the Blue Letter Bible listed down the following as scriptural answers to the question, to whom did Jesus appear after his death? And the first in the list was Mary Magdalene. And this was recorded in uh, all four Gospels, in the Gospel of John, chapter 20, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, in Mark 16, and in Luke 24. In the Gospel of John, chapter 20, it was the story about the empty tomb. Early in the morning, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and realized that the tomb was empty. And she reported the matter to Peter and the other disciples who went to see for themselves the report of Mary Magdalene. And it was in this story that Mary Magdalene met Jesus, whom at first he thought was the gardener. In the Gospel of Matthew, Mary Magdalene again was, uh, was uh, at the tomb, but this time, meron siyang kasama, the other Mary. And uh, the same story, they found the tomb empty, and then there was this angel who told them to, uh, to go to 
to Galilee because Jesus, whom they are looking for, has been risen from the dead. And on their way to Galilee, from the tomb, Mary and the other Mary, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, met Jesus. In the Gospel of Mark, which is a rather direct to the point narration of uh, the post-resurrection story, it was mentioned there uh, specifically that Jesus appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he uh, drove out seven demons. In the Gospel of Luke, there was no mention about Mary Magdalene uh, meeting the res resurrected Jesus, but in the Gospel of Luke, uh, the same story went. Uh, Mary Magdalene realized that the tomb was empty, and she saw uh, two angels, right? Now, the first in the list is Mary Magdalene. The second in the list, is the other Mary mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28. And this was actually named in the Gospel. The name, uh, sorry, this was actually referred to as uh, the mother of James the Less and uh, the wife of Cleophas, one of the disciples of Jesus, which if we are familiar with that event when Jesus uh, traveled to uh, Emmaus with two of the disciples, one of the disciples was named Cleophas. So the second in the list of Don Stewart as the witness to the resurrection of Jesus was the other Mary, okay, the mother of James the Less. The third in the list of Don Stewart is Saint Peter. And there are two biblical evidences to this. One is found in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, which is actually the story about the two disciples on their way to Emmaus. And in that story, when they realized that it was Jesus who traveled with them all along, they returned to Jerusalem to report to the apostles what they experienced. And the disciples reported back to them that really the Lord has risen from the dead and he appeared to Cephas, to Simon. And in uh, the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, it was the testimony of St. Paul himself that the risen Lord appeared to Cephas, to St. Peter. So St. Peter is the third in the list. The fourth in the list of Don Stewart are the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. One of the disciples is named Cleophas and the other was unknown. And this can be read from the Gospel of Luke chapter 24. The fifth in the list of Don Stewart are the disciples staying in Jerusalem, which was actually in two parts. The first part was when uh, Thomas was absent, and the second instance of Jesus' appearance to the apostles was when Thomas was uh, with them, right? And the sixth in the list are the seven disciples at the lake of Tiberias when the disciples went back to their original occupation as fishermen and one night they could not catch something early in the morning jesus appeared to them by the shore telling them to lower their nets again and nobody recognized jesus except for the disciple whom jesus loved who said it is the lord right so that was the sixth in the list of Don Stewart. The seventh in the list of Don Stewart are the 11 disciples in Galilee, which is narrated in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28. If you remember, it was the time when Jesus appeared to these disciples on a mountain in Galilee and sent them, saying, Go therefore to the ends of the world, baptize, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And eight in the list of uh, Don Stewart are the people whom he mentioned in his first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 15, which is a rundown of those who have seen the resurrected Jesus, beginning with Cephas, then with the Twelve, and then the 500 brothers at once, and uh, to James, and last of all, 
uh, Paul was testifying that the risen Lord appeared to him. So according to Don Stewart, this list of individ individuals mentioned in the Bible are enough to convince the disciples of Jesus beyond any doubt that Jesus rose from the dead. But there was no mention of Mary. There was Mary Magdalene, the other Mary, Peter, the rest of the disciples, even to the 500 brothers, all at once testified by Paul, but no, no mention of Mary, the mother of Jesus. So now, where did we get the tradition of the Salubong? If it is not uh, biblical, well, uh, Father Rafael de la Cruz, SDB, in his article, traced the origin of the Salubong to the Spanish Jesuit missionaries who first set foot in the archipelago with the conquistadores. So how did we come up with such conjecture? How did we come up with the idea that the Salubong was brought to us by uh, the Jesuits? Well, we know that the Jesuits came to our country in the year 1581 but uh, before they came to, to our country, to the archipelago, the founder of the Jesuits, uh, Ignatius of Loyola, wrote a retreat book sometime in 1522 to 15 or 24, entitled The Spiritual Exercises. And it was a series of meditations about Jesus. And in one of the meditations, uh, which is entitled Mysteries of the Resurrection of Christ our Lord, St. Ignatius mentioned that the first apparition of Jesus after he rose from the dead was to Mary. Though he was aware that this was not biblical, St. Ignatius boldly mentioned in his spiritual exercises that the first person to ever see Jesus after the resurrection was her mother, Mary. So, kahit ang salubong is not biblical, it was injected to our tradition thanks to the Jesuits and to St. Ignatius of Loyola. So, it is clear there is no biblical reference whatsoever to the meeting of the recent Christ and Mary. But just because there was no biblical reference to it, it doesn't mean that we should, that we should stop our uh, practice and tradition of the Salubong. And for this, John Paul II, in his May 21, 1997 Wednesday audience at the Vatican, said something beautiful about this truth and what it tells us. The late Pope said, the silence, meaning the silence in the Bible of the meeting of Mary and Jesus, must not lead us to the conclusion that after the resurrection, Christ did not appear to Mary. Rather, it invites us to seek the reasons why the evangelists made such a choice. Parabagan sinasabi sa atin ni John Paul II, St. John Paul II, that even if it was not mentioned in the Bible, still we are invited to reflect on it and see the truth of the encounter of Jesus with his mother. And from the truth, right, reflect on the meaning of this encounter in our life and see what could be the possible lesson why the evangelist did not simply mention such encounter. We said uh, there is no explicit mention in the Bible of the encounter, but we may say they are implicit ones. And at least we, we are familiar, we, are, uh, we, we know at least two implicit reference to uh, the encounter of Mary and the recent Jesus. The first implicit reference is one we, f we find in uh, the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians chapter 15. And this was actually uh, used by John Paul II in his uh, 
exploration on the meeting of Mary and uh, uh, his recent son. And this first letter of Paul to the Corinthians chapter 15 was actually the testimony of St. Paul as to the witnesses to the resurrection of Jesus, the, the list of those who saw the risen Lord, starting from Peter, from Cephas, to the 12 apostles, to the 500 brothers, all at once. And this is implicit because there was a mention particularly of the 500 brothers who saw the risen Lord at once. And we are invited to think that, would it be uh, impossible that one of the 500 who witnessed the resurrection of Jesus was Mary, right? It is not a far-fetched idea that uh, Mary, being one of the disciples, could have been you know, one of those who witnessed the resurrection of Jesus. And another implicit reference in the Bible is one we, we, we find in Acts chapter 1, verse 14. Uh, Acts 1, uh, verse 14, tells us that Mary, the mother of Jesus, along with other women, were part of the first Christian community in Jerusalem. And if Jesus showed himself to the apostles who were part of, of the first Christian community in Jerusalem, it is not far a far-fetched idea that Jesus also showed himself to Mary, who was part of the first Christian community. So again, no explicit reference, but there are at least two implicit references. Joseph Pronishen, the staff writer of the National Catholic Register in the U.S., wrote an article entitled, After His Resurrection, Jesus Appeared First to His Mother Mary, Say the Saints. And he gives us what a few saints said about Jesus meeting his mother. And for the sake of our exploration, our presentation, we are noting at least two saints. The first is Saint Vincent Ferrer, and the other one is Saint John Paul II. Saint Vincent Ferrer, upon examinations of his sermons, gave us three reasons why we should think and believe that Jesus showed himself to Mary after the resurrection. And I would call this reasons of St. Vincent Ferrer appeals, right? So the first reason is an appeal to justice. St. Vincent Ferrer said that uh, Jesus must have seen and met the Blessed Mother because it was in fulfillment of the fourth commandment. Uh, we know the fourth commandment, honor your father and your mother. So since the scripture says, honor your father and mother, Christ most perfectly kept that law, being a devout Jew. And what better way to honor your mother, who during that time was grieving, than to console her by showing yourself to her, right? Kung ang dahilan kung bakit nangungulila ang iyong ina ay yung, uh, yung absence mo, yung pagkawala mo, ano ba ang hihigit pa sa pagkandili sa yung minamahal na ina than to show yourself to her? So, appeal to justice in fulfillment of the fourth commandment. The second reason given by uh, Saint Vincent Ferrer is an appeal to faith. We know that Mary was not just a mother to Jesus. He was a disciple and a believer. And we know that the merit of faith, the merit of the one who believes in Christ, is seeing Christ. We are reminded of uh, what is written in the book of wisdom chapter 1 verse 2 the lord shows himself to them who have faith in him if mary is one of the disciples who believed and in fact the first one who believed in his son in the entirety 
of what Jesus is, of what Jesus preached, what Jesus lived. Kung siya yung unang disipulo at naniwala kay Jesus, hindi malayong isipin natin na dahil naniwala siya, nagpakita sa kanya ang kanyang anak na si Jesus, di ba? Hindi malayong isipin yan. Appeal to faith. And the third reason given by Saint Vincent Ferrer is an appeal to love. The love between Mary and Jesus is undeniable. Hindi ko natin mapapasinungalingan yan. Jesus loved His mother and Mary loved her son so much. Hindi mapapantayan ang pagmamahal ni Jesus at ni Maria sa isa't isa. Now, going back to uh, the Gospel of John chapter 14, we are told that He, uh, Jesus telling His disciples, that He who loves me shall be loved by my Father, and I will love Him and will manifest myself to Him. So unless one is not in good terms, di ba, with his or her mother or father, hindi magpapakita. Pero dahil nandoon ang pagmamahal, it is unthinkable na yung minamahal mo, pagtataguan mo. Di ba? Kailangan mong makita, pagpapakitaan mo. So an appeal to love tells us that since Mary and Jesus loved each other, Jesus must have shown himself to her mother after the resurrection. Di ba meron tayong uh, uh, ugali na parang hindi ho natin masyadong uh, napapansin but some of us ito yung ugali, yung yung anak. Especially when uh, the son or the daughter still lives doon sa bahay ng kanyang mga magulang. O sabihin na natin isang isang studyante. After school, pagdating sa bahay, minsan palaging unang hinahanap either the father or the mother. Nasaan si mama? Nasaan si papa? ba? Diba? So Jesus uh, had gone away for three days ano, to fulfill the mission. Nung bumalik siya, nung nabuhay siyang muli, it is not unlikely to think na ang una niyang hinanap ay ang kanyang ina. At since sinanap niya, nakita niya at nagkita sila. The Defend the Bride website added another reason as to why we must think and believe that Jesus met His mother. And this I call the appeal to Mary's dignity. We know the dignity of Mary. She is the Immaculate Conception, right? She received a singular grace. No one else has been given such grace to be conceived without original sin. Now, come to think of this. Kung si Mary binigyan ng ganitong grasya, right, which is very unique, uh, nobody, no one else has been given such dignity, bakit ipagkakait sa kanya ang VIP access to the greatest miracle that Jesus performed? Diba? It's, it's like unlikely to think na Uh, the Immaculate Conception, binigyan ng singular grace, and yet was not able to witness the resurrection of Jesus. Parang ang hirap isipin noon. After all, in the first miracle of Jesus, in Cana, Galilee, Mary was there, right? The first miracle of Jesus. Why not be there also in the greatest miracle that Jesus performed? Coming back from the dead. So it's unlikely to think that. Second reason, uh, appeal to dignity. In the letter of Paul to the Corinthians, uh, second letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 7, St. Paul tells us that as you have shared much in the suffering of Christ, so too you will share in His consolation. Now this is insightful in our attempt to prove the meeting of Mary and Jesus after the resurrection because Mary, of all the people who must have hurt because of the suffering of Jesus on the cross, uh, when He was uh, on His way to Calvary, when He was crucified, when He was dying on the cross, kung meron pong higit na nasaktan, it was Mary, right? And if we are going to connect this to what St. Paul said in his second letter to the Corinthians, that as you shared much in the suffering of Christ, 
so too you will share in His consolation. If Christ died and Mary shared in the suffering of Christ, then in the glory of the resurrection of Christ, hindi ba malayong isipin that Mary also shared in that glory? Bakit ipagkakait sa kanya yon? Given the fact that it was Mary, among others, who shared in the suffering of Christ. Right? So, it's unlikely to think na hindi nakita ni Jesus si Maria after the resurrection. And come to think of this, Mary was present in all the uh, events and episodes in the life of Christ. Of course, he was there at the birth of Christ. He was there in his uh, circumcision, in the presentation in the temple. He was there in the loss and finding of Jesus in the temple. Of course, in the hidden life in Nazareth, when they went to Egypt, Mary was there in all the episodes in the life of Christ. Right? Even at the foot of the cross, Mary was there. When Jesus died on the cross, Mary, Mary was there. When Christ was uh, laid in the tomb, Mary was there. So it is unlikely to think that Mary was absent during the resurrection of Jesus. So these are things that would lead us to think na, oh nga, no? hindi pala po pwedeng hindi uh, wala doon si Mary. Another thing, according to the Defending the Bride website, it is unthinkable that the most perfect creature, referring to Mary, would be denied of what was given to a lesser perfect creature. And this is very logical. Jesus showed himself to the apostles, showed himself to Mary Magdalene, these are lesser creatures in terms of merit because as we said, Mary is the Immaculate Conception, the recipient of the singular grace. So kung tumanggap yung lesser creatures of this grace, being a witness to the resurrection, why would it be denied of the most perfect creature who is Mary? And according to the Defend Defending the Bride website, not only it is unthinkable, it is also an insult to Jesus if we think that way. Because according to a certain Edmer of Canterbury, a disciple of St. Anselm, it is an insult to Jesus who is the sole source of grace. Para bagang, we may think na, bakit may ipagkakait kay Mary na, ma na makita ka na nabuhay na magmuli? It is an insult to Jesus. Now, given these arguments, we are convinced that uh, Jesus really showed himself to his mother, Mary. Again, why was there no explicit mention in the Bible? We go back to John Paul II. John Paul II offered us a very good insight on this question. And he said, it was not recorded in the scriptures because Mary could have been a biased witness. Diba? Alam natin ang mga magulang, bias yan sa kanilang anak. Para bagang, kung meron tatanungin at si Mary yung magwe-witness, parang ang hirap paniwalaan whether what the parent or the mother is telling us. So, Mary is not a bias, could have been a bias witness. And so, the evangelist out of the delicadeza did not record the meeting of Jesus and her mother. You know, we have to go back to the fact about the Bible. We know that the Bible contains the truth, but it is also true that not all truth are contained in the Bible. Hindi ho lahat ng katotohanan nasa Biblia. Bagamat ang laman ng Biblia, lahat puro katotohanan, hindi lahat ng katotohanan nasusulat doon. And perhaps one of the truth that was not recorded was the meeting of Jesus and, her, and His mother. And come to consider what Jesus said in the Gospel of John chapter 21, verse 25. He said, or the evangelist said, There are also many other things that Jesus did. But if this were to be described individually, I do not think the whole world would contain the books that would be written. It is John the evangelist himself telling us, not all are written in the Bible. Not all truth were written in the Bible. So these are the considerations and arguments that would, you know, lead us to think that Mary really met with Jesus after 
his resurrection. Now, to the question, did the reason Jesus really meet his mother? After so much exploration, we realize, though it was not explicitly mentioned in the Bible, there is no contradiction to reason nor to faith to say and to believe that the reason Jesus met his mother after the resurrection. Though there was no uh, explicit mention in the Bible, but we have implicit you know, references in the Bible. And there are sound arguments coming from St. Vincent Ferrer and John Paul II to convince us that Jesus really met his mother after the resurrection. We have provided four arguments, right? Appeal to justice, appeal to faith, appeal to love, and appeal to the dignity of Mary. And since there was no reason for us to believe that they did not meet at all, therefore we can conclude they really met. Uh, in philosophy, we call this argument, this proof, indirect proof. When we are, uh, the absence of the opposite argument presupposes the, the fact of the other. So did Jesus meet his mother? We are convinced that Jesus met her mother, uh, his mother, Mary.